Hey ladies, how's it going? Welcome back. For those of you that don't already know, my name is Drea and today I'm going to be doing the video for mental health. I've honestly done this video probably like, this is probably my fifth time. So I had done it once. I did like 30 minutes of it and then I realized I was like kind of just rambling. So I did it one more time. The camera died. By the time I got back to doing it, um, it just, I decided to start again. And then I didn't like that video. I edited the video. I didn't like it. I felt like I missed a lot of the original topics I wanted to discuss. So I gave it one more chance. The video ended up being pretty lengthy. So the time I tried editing the fourth one, <clears throat> at some point the video got, um, it basically like got stuck on the app. Like it just wouldn't load, it wouldn't do anything. I closed the app and it just wasn't working. So I deleted the edit that I had done and I totally forgot that I had already deleted that video from the SIM card. So I was left with no video. So here I am trying number five. I'm sorry for the poor lighting, but this is the cleanest part of my house right now. And it's not even clean, it's just that you can't see everything else around it, which is perfect for this topic we're about to discuss. So I had asked a lot of you guys to ask me some questions on Instagram. Um, obviously that was weeks ago by now. So I'm going to try to think of them from the top of my head because I also don't have my other phone to look at a previous uh, DM that might have that on there. But I wanted to discuss mental health just because it's something that not a lot of people talk about, but everybody's going through, especially nowadays where social media is so big a lot of influencers tend to make it seem like just life is perfect they're making money and that's it but it's really not like that and i think they just hate to admit it or maybe because that type of what would you say content might not get the views or whatever and it is a hard topic as it is anyway because Everybody has their own opinion about it. Some people don't understand the concept. For the longest time, I truly just thought like, how can someone, you know, literally be depressed or how can they have that type of mindset? Because I, you know, have had my fair share of experiences, but I always managed to push through. But not until recently, in the past couple of months, I've been experiencing such bad anxiety, depression, like it's just, it's so bad and it's unfortunately all due to my business. My business started as a hobby and it's now something that I just don't want to do anymore. Something that I used to love so much, like I just, I can't, it's, I can't say I can't stand it. But I really don't look forward to working anymore. Aside from, you know, I'm excited to meet the customers. I'm not excited for the process. I'm just so worn out. In the past few months, I've had like a batch of very rude customers. And it just, it makes you question life a lot. Um, but without wasting any more time, let's get right into it. So... I think social media really brings out like the whole mental health issue uh, more to life, I would say. I'm pretty sure, obviously, in the years before social media was so big, everybody had their own struggles, but I think social media amplifies it by a lot. I've always believed that if you were in a room with all of the followers that you have on your Instagram account, you would still not have the guts to say the shit people say on social media. Sometimes people just post all their feelings and this and that, but it's that social media that I truly think that gives them the courage, I guess you would say, the courage that like, I'm just gonna post it so everybody can see how I'm feeling and this and that. But in reality, like you wouldn't even do that. And 
in a sense that's very questionable about questionable about people's character the fact that you can do something behind the screen but you can't do it in person it's kind of like being two-faced in a sense um a lot of these people tend to post like subliminal messages and at the end of the day it's like you're only hurting yourself like nobody else really cares i was i used to be like that i was in a really long relationship and i would always post subliminal, subliminal messages and it's like who the fuck cares and then i just look stupid because then i'd be right back you know all happy with my man so it's like social media is fun and all but i guess we should really just pick and choose correctly what we post on there um social media also gives people a lot of courage to say very mean things like believe me i know freedom of speech and we're entitled to our own opinions but i think above all that it's very true what they say if you have nothing to say don't say it at all people that can't see past that that they're just like well it's my opinion whether you like it or not like if you can't see past the main point like if you have nothing nice to say don't say it at all if you can't see past that like your character is questionable as well like something is wrong with you to where you just think like you're better than jesus apparently that you just have to get what you are thinking out out there out of your head like you have no self-control and you have no consideration of what the other person might feel with those words you're saying like that's what i think of people that can't filter what they say um which again it's brought to you by social media realistically speaking some people are crazier and they can actually say these things in person but i think social media does really like amplify the amount of people that are very really rude mean or they just talk a lot about like their mental not necessarily like admitting they have problems but they say things that make you question like their well-being um aside from social media i think the people you associate yourself with really affect that as well um sometimes you can't pick your family but i do think sometimes people's family is what messes them up families are not perfect but i do think at the end of the day we all have the same opportunity to choose to be better a lot of people let their surroundings affect them and you can't blame them because you know someone who was brought up with you know a bad childhood or things like that versus someone that had a really great childhood perfect parents whatever those two people may come out to be way different you know this one could be a really good kid and this one could be really bad and blame it on all the okay go sit down sit down sit down Shh. i do apologize but i won't be editing this video because i'm tired of going back and forth so i'm going to try to keep this at like 20 minutes and then there you guys have it i just want to get it out there and make it very short simple to the point so you guys can just kind of get the gist of it and if you guys want more regarding this topic then let me know but um what was i saying so yeah you can have two people that grew up in two different households and of course the one with the good household came out really good and then vice versa but you also have situations where the kid in the really good household turns out to be the opposite so at the end of the day you have to take into consideration that it's all upon ourselves what we choose to do there have been many people that have been in horrible situations and they make the most out of it like they choose to just surpass that overcome it be better and not let those things define them and i think everyone literally has that opportunity unless you were literally born with perhaps some type of disability that keeps you from making a choice of becoming better or choosing to be better everybody has that same option it all comes down to whether you're willing to work for it the way i see this whole mental health thing 
it's kind of like an exercise. You know, when you haven't worked out in ages and you feel tired, overweight, things like that. When you get into working out your first day, it's really hard. Sometimes you're like, I'm gonna run a mile today. And then you get on the treadmill or you go on the block and you're running and maybe halfway through you're like, I can't do it. So you give up. But the next time you come back to do the mile, you might get a little further. And you're gonna keep trying until you get that mile, until you finish the run, until you get better at your pace, whatever you wanna do. But the point is, you might not do it the first time, but you just have to keep at it. So whenever you're experiencing anything like depression, anxiety, anger, like resentment, whatever, you have to acknowledge that you're feeling some type of way. Sometimes you can be in a relationship or a friendship where you don't know when to acknowledge that you are the problem, you are the toxic person. And when you can't do that, it's never going to work out for you in life because you're always going to feel like people are out there to get you when in reality, you are the problem. And it's okay to admit it because you can fix it and help your future, realistically speaking. You can surround yourself with good people. Um, it's not to say like, it could be, but it's not to say you are literally like a bad person. It could be that the people you're surrounding yourself with bring the worst in you so maybe you have to acknowledge like okay i don't want to be acting like this maybe it's the people i'm hanging with so remove those people from your life you do not need toxic people just as i said sometimes the toxic people are our family and unfortunately we can't choose those i think at some point in time you can't choose to kind of distance yourself like some families are just very very toxic and you can choose to forgive but you're never going to forget and if you forgive them and they just kind of keep going at it, then clearly they're not going to change. And I truly don't think you are, how do you say it? I don't think you have to stay in touch with your family or anybody. Like you came into this world by yourself, you're going to leave by yourself. If someone is tearing you down, you don't need them in your life, period. Um, so same would go for relationships. We tend to depend on like a significant other to make us better feel feel better but girls don't realize that when you finally stop dating guys and learn your self-worth learn to love yourself before anybody else then you realize you don't need anybody to make you happy you need someone to be like the cherry on top like i have a good life and you make it that much better but if your life like if you're not happy by yourself you're not going to be happy with another person especially if that person is toxic so that's something everybody should really consider um as far as friends make sure you've got like true friends so many girls out there are always like i have so many best friends and have just like so many friends in general but some of these friends are so shady and so mean um when they throw like low blows and it's like wait what um i personally think like believe me that i'm a like i like to mess around i like to play around i would always hang out with boys in high school so they would roast me and i would roast them back <laughs> right back um so i know how to mess around i like to think myself of like the life of the party i love to make everyone happy and just smile and laugh so at my expense like i'll be trying to make some jokes sometimes it's a hit or miss but it's like i always want to make people laugh so believe me that i know playing around sometimes things could get a little deep but it's like i'll take it right back but it's not like nothing too serious i think everybody would understand what's good enough when you're trying to make a joke or something but there's friends that i've had that it's not no joke like they're trying to give you like constructive criticism but it's rude as hell i've had girls tell me like don't do your makeup like that like it looks horrible like don't do it again and i would be so insecure every day going into work that was my coworker that said that because i was just so scared of how my makeup looked looking back now yes i did it horribly i just i didn't know how to like put um like contour on i remember not contour um 
I can't think of the word, but I didn't know how to put it right, so it looked bad. But you don't tell people that. Sometimes you just have to let people realize their own mistakes on their own. And honestly, I don't think I have it in me to be the type of friend that's like, people say, if you're a true fan, like you would say, if you have spinach in your teeth, I'm gonna tell you. But I'm not gonna point certain things out that just come off as rude. At some point in time, you will realize that was a bad look. If you don't realize it, but you truly like the way it comes out, it's not my problem. So I've had people say that. I had a different coworker and friend actually, at some point in time, point out that my boobs were saggy because my chest is not plump. It's not like, I feel like I have more of a wider chest, like breast, um, but they were saying that my boobs were saggy and it's like, First of all, one of them had implants. So it's like, had you not had your implants, how did your boobs look? That's beside the point. The other one, it's like, wh why are you talking? And the thing is that I'm not one to ever criticize anyone. But now when you want to throw low blows at me, you're going to spark up my, how would you call it? Like my defense mechanisms. And I'm going to be like, wait, hold up. So of course, I never said anything back. But that's rude. Like, you don't go and tell your friend, like, why are your boobs saggy? Like, okay. <laughs> and I've also had that same friend and a sibling of theirs, which we were all friends. Um, they pointed out that my legs had cottage cheese. And it's like, girl, I had lost, like, 60 plus pounds when I was younger. So, of course, I was left with, like, kind of extra skin, loose skin. I wasn't fit or anything. But it's like... How can a friend sit there, look you in the face, and criticize you like that? Like, what the hell? I don't know. I could say so much about that. But all of these examples, people that sit there and criticize you, it's a reflection of their own insecurities. Maybe they might have better breasts than I do, nicer legs than I do, but something they're lacking something that you have, or despite what you're lacking you still have better chances than they do they do and that makes them upset so you just have to really pick and choose your friends if you have friends that say things like that to you you don't need them in your life and believe me that took me long enough but i cut them off it just my one best friend marilyn is the perfect example of what a friend should be and I don't take any less. I don't believe girls should be catty with each other. Like, if girls are always fake with you, like, something's wrong with them. And you don't need to be giving each other second chances like it's a relationship. Like, no. There's plenty of people out there to be friends with. You just have to be very picky, get to know them, and move on with life. Um, Milo, be nice to your brother. Sit down. Sit down. No, don't talk back to me. Shh, no. Sit. My apologies. Um, so yeah, so I think the people you, you surround yourself with could really contribute to your mental health. Some kind of, how do you say it? I'm like not gonna edit any of this video, so I feel so bad that I'm even uh, tripping on my words. Hey! stop please Shh. um some will kind of define how you like your outlook on life and how you handle things in the future and others just bring you down like they tear you down which is those very toxic people um but again it goes back to the exercise you need to realize okay this person is mean to me so i feel bad about myself or this person is just so toxic that i'm becoming toxic and that was your first step. You're acknowledging what's wrong in the picture. And now you're going to exercise fixing it. So you're going to try to do something to get you out of those situations. If something is making you feel, feel depressed, anxious, angry, you acknowledged it. And now you're going to work towards it, whether that's, you know, surrounding yourself with people that bring the best out of you or watching movies, going on a run. I really think runs tend to help, but believe me that I do know 
there's times in life where you're going through a certain thing and no matter what you do you can't get a thought out of your head you could be watching tv and you're just thinking about it like you're daydreaming type of thing um you could be on a run and listening to music but you still can't get a thought out of your head so you have to really practice finding what brings those thoughts out of your head i truly think you guys shouldn't depend on like pills and medication just because um if you know this <laughs> just because pills and medication will have some sort of side effects so sure your your like mental health might get better but it's going to affect you somewhere else so if you could really just practice on making or exercise making your mental health better little by little it's not, believe me that I know it's easier said than done, but it is possible. Again, so many people that grew up in horrible, with horrible childhoods, childhood, um, they overcame it. They chose to be better. We all have a choice and you have to acknowledge it and take control of it, really. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm perfect and I think of the exercise and I'm just like oh I'm better like it's not like that I work on it every day but I just know that if I chose to not be happy or try to make it better like I don't know if I would be here right now I'm going through so much stress with the company to where I just I truly sometimes question life. I'm like, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm so tired. I'm so unhappy. It just, it sucks that it's come to this point. But I know it'll get better. Um, so if it gets better for me, I know it will get better for you. It's almost at 25 minutes. Um, some of the people, I'll think of like three questions people ask. Some people ask like how do you get out of bed every morning and i always think of it like if i'm about to win the lottery if i chose to stay in bed and be depressed i could have missed out on maybe going to buy a ticket and winning the lottery so it's like every time you choose to stay in bed you miss the opportunity to be happy again to try and just move forward because again we all have the choice and option to be happy um someone else asked how do i deal with depression or anxiety and for the most part i try to just hang out with my close friends um i try to keep myself busy do something but if not i typically honestly just go to sleep sometimes it's unfortunate that you think or we come to think that sleep is better than real life because at least you're not somehow in pain when you're sleeping. Um, but if that at least keeps you from doing anything stupid, go to sleep, take a nap, rest your body. Sometimes you're just way too trained to think properly. So maybe you're just under rested. Um, what's another thing someone said? <sighs> think of another thing at this time but uh well actually somebody pointed out that nobody talks about people that have dealt with certain types of abuse and i just want everyone to know that you're honestly not the only one and it's so fortunate that you could say that like you're not the only one so many people are going through this any type of abuse verbal verbal abuse um physical abuse sexual abuse it's so unfortunate but again i don't wish it on anybody but if you have been through it you did not deserve that and you have a choice to make it better don't let that define you it's a hard topic but <clears throat> Don't ever feel like for any type of situation, don't ever feel like you're alone. If you ever need someone to talk to, always feel free to reach 
to reach out to me. I just, some people really don't have anyone to talk to or maybe they feel that you, you like they somehow feel ashamed to bring it up to anybody that's close to them like you don't want to be vulnerable and admit to something you've gone through so maybe talking to a stranger might help you but just know you're not alone just know you can always count on me if you need someone to talk to and we're all gonna make it through so i'm gonna leave it at that we're almost at 26 minutes thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully the next time um i can i don't know give you guys more info i probably missed a lot of points but there you have it thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel comment down below your thoughts on this video and yeah follow me on instagram a underscore daro with seven o's and i'll see you guys next time bye